this is what it's really like living on one income as a family of three in the UK. Hey team, welcome back to HD Designs Crochet. I'm Heather and this is my channel all about crochet, motherhood and finances along the way. Today I'm working on a project for my secret collection. A little bit excited to share that with you. But as I can't talk about the project that I'm working on, I thought I would take this time to talk to you about another subject that has been on my mind and on my heart. And that is what it's really like living on one income as a family of three. I've previously shared our finance journey and that we officially count ourselves as living off one income from September, like the official start date was September 2023. And then we really hunkered down and really, really adhered to our budget from January 2024. September, no, September, October, November and December of 2023. I still had a little bit of my own money coming in. I'd just done a launch um, of my collection. So I had quite a bit of money from that that I put by and I was using that, like drip feeding that money into my personal account up until like the January. Um, so yeah, that was like our test period. And then we officially, officially had one income from January, 2024. And that was also around that point when we decided that we would go on a debt-free journey. So 2024 in terms of finances has looked so different to any other year that we have had together. And in June, we will have been together five years. And as we are newbies to this lifestyle, to being a one income family and to joining, I didn't realise this was such a thing. And I don't, I guess you just don't until you go looking for it because you are in that circumstance. I didn't realise that it is such a thing to be a one income family. And because we are newbies to this, I want to share our thoughts and our experiences so far. I quite like looking back on these and I definitely, definitely like to watch and listen to these on other channels because as I said, it is where we are right now. So whilst I work on weaving in the ends on this project in the glorious sunshine on a May Saturday afternoon, I'm waiting for Teddy and, and Brad to come back because they've had a soft play date. Um, I'm going to use this time to sit and chat to you about what it is really like being a one income family and the changes that I have seen in our family because of it. Oh, this is a biggie. Okay, these are in no particular order. So I'm gonna work my way through them. The first one I'm going to pick up off my list is a mindset shift. It's been massive, absolutely massive. Prior, to our decision, September 2023, I felt as if I wasn't contributing to our family if I didn't financially contribute. I didn't see my own value. And post decision, September 2023, that Teddy would not be going into daycare and that we would be staying home, that we would be a one income family. And also I do need to side note here and preface that yes, I do get an income from HGDC, but we discount it because I'm self-employed and it's not a set income. So it could be a £10, £100, £1,000 a month. And it purely depends on what is going on within HGDC. And right now I'm actually on a break from HGDC. So yeah, we discount that. 
and I think in the future if I was to reach like a regular um income threshold then we might count ourselves as two income family but because I'm self-employed I don't know if we ever will put ourselves in that category anyway I digress slightly there the mindset mindset shift is that I didn't see any value in the work that I was doing around our home I didn't see any value in the things that I was doing day to day I didn't feel like I was being productive there wasn't a financial um compensation for my time and so I felt redundant I really did and then as I started to consume more and more um stay at home mum one income family content I started to have a change in that which I'm grateful for and I now value the work that I do within our home and what I do for our family for Teddy and for our marriage Yes, there might not be money coming into our home because of me. However, I contribute in so many ways, so many that can be seen and can't be seen. For example, I provide all of the childcare to our child, which means that without me, Brad wouldn't be able to go to work to earn the money he earned. He would need to find childcare of some sort and that would have a financial cost to it. So I am saving our family money. And not only am I saving our family money, the unseen side is that if he was having stressful nursery drop-offs, Teddy hated going, it was a whole ordeal, and he was at work worrying about Teddy, he wouldn't be able to fully focus on his job because he would be thinking about Teddy, his mind would be with Teddy. Whereas when he's at work, he has told me that he can fully focus and switch off from home because he knows I have everything handled at home. He knows that we are fine and that gives him a peace of mind that is worth a lot more to him than an income. The other ways that I value my time is the things that I do for our family. So the meal prepping and the budgeting and the things that I do that save us money within our home yes I don't have again it's not so much an income coming in but it's so much about money going out so I have found that it's convenience versus time and this puts me into my second point of when you have two incomes you might have more money but you have less time so you pay for things for convenience but when you have one income, you will have more time. I mean, I'm not going to go into all of the grey area of this because whether you work in or out of the home and whether you have a job or not, you are still working as a mother. But let's not go too deeply into that. And I will say that as a stay at home mother, I have more time to do things around the home and to do other little errands and odd jobs that I probably would not bother doing or wouldn't have the time to do if I was working outside of our home. For example, I sell all of Teddy's old clothes that he's outgrown on Vinted, but I wouldn't do that if I was working full time because I wouldn't necessarily need to. I'd have the extra income, so I would have the convenience of extra money and I would just spend it. And I wouldn't necessarily have the time because I would be working a set amount of hours outside of our home. And then it possibly wouldn't be worth me selling a bundle of his vests for £2 because the time I would spend, like it just wouldn't stack up. Whereas because I am at home, I can list everything on Vinted. And then when I take Teddy, and we go for our daily walk, we can nip and drop that parcel off or I can get Brad to drop that parcel off when he walks Albie because we are home more and we can do those things. So there is a very, very, very definite difference between convenience versus time. And I lean more into the time side of these things. So I have the time to cook bread from scratch, so I do. And I have the time to put more into our food and our meals. And I have the time 
You see where I'm going with this? Convenience versus time is a big one. The next one on my list I'm going to pick up is that there are always sacrifices. I don't actually refer to them as sacrifices. I refer to them as trade-offs. So no matter what situation you are in, there is a trade-off. You are a mother that works outside of the family home, then you will have an income coming in. It will help out towards bills. Um, you might feel that you have some t more time to yourself, more adult conversation, all of these things. But one of the trade-offs is, is that you spend less time in your home and less time with your children. Whereas if you are a stay-at-home mum, you may feel that you have less financial independence and that you have less time to yourself and that you get fewer opportunities to have a break from your children. Um, but the trade-offs to that are that you get to spend a lot more time with them, you get to see a lot more of their moments and you get to spend a lot more time in the home that you work, you, that your family works so hard to pay for and you get to enjoy all of those moments. So there are trade-offs in every situation and if you look at other people's lives and you think, oh well, the grass is greener over there, then you will never be happy with your current trade-offs you really have to choose, like, what are your priorities? You have to decide and you have to keep them in mind. So, yes, um, for example, personally for myself, we took my car off the road because it wasn't financially viable to fix it. And we decided rather than putting another car on the road that we would take 12 months to 18 months, maybe two years to put the extra money towards paying off our debts so that we could be in a position that we want to be as a family and then I will take some time to save up and get the car that I want at a future date. So the trade-offs right now are that if I had gone and got a job outside of our home or an income of some sort, if I was employed, I would have my own car on the road and I could go all the places and do all the things with Teddy. However, the trade-off would be that I could only go to do all of these things and go all of the places in the car that I've got around work and nursery times. However, I am home all the time and I get to take him wherever I want to go. Yes, we don't have a car, but there are plenty of things that we can do that are within walking distance, that we can do at home and that we can use public transport or I can arrange to borrow a car. And it's just that mindset shift in your head. Like there are always sacrifices and the grass isn't greener necessarily where you look. And I'm gonna then go into my next point that not many people will understand the choices that you have made, the decisions that you have made, and that is okay. Not everyone will understand and not many of them will be kind. And that's something that you need to be, that you need to not only be prepared for, but like protect yourself from. So as personally, between Brad and I, we've received so many different comments of like judgment for the choices we've made, judgment for the area that our home is in, the street that it's on, the size of our home. Uh, judgment for not putting Teddy into daycare like you're going to affect his socialization it's going to be detrimental to him you're over anxious you're this you're that and then you have people saying we could never live like you like um people assuming that we are poor that we are really struggling when actually they don't have the full picture and they don't realize that we are choosing to direct our finances towards overpaying things because we want to be in a different space and that means short-term pain long-term gain we are choosing to remain in a smaller home because it means that our payments are more affordable it means that we can comfortably live off one income like these are the choices we've made and people will not understand that you don't need to explain yourself to people. You don't need them to understand. You don't need them to support. And if they have these comments, then 
me myself I've had to really learn to one not engage in these conversations with certain types of people because you just know how it's going to go so don't set yourself up and the other thing I've had to learn is to kind of brush off these comments if if the people making these comments do not have the same priorities as you they are just not going to understand and their life is going to look different so don't compare yourself to them and don't allow what they say to you to knock you off your path the other reality that i was not prepared for <laughs> not prepared for <laughs> was the teamwork required between brad and i to make this work there are arguments i will level with you there are arguments because when there's money pressure, there is stress and that means there's disconnect between the two of us. And we have had to be like really, really open and honest and just be like, look, I've had to say to him that the ways in which the budget makes me feel and why it makes me feel that way and why it's so important for me to have that financial security. And he's had to say to me like, that when you speak to me in this way or when you talk about this certain thing it makes him feel a certain way and we've had to be really open honest and vulnerable and be like look we are both winding each other up here and the arguments are have been really 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 hellish really really tough but i will say that whether you are arguing about lack of money or other things you have to put so much work into your marriage and no one ever, ever made me aware of how much work you need to put in day in, day out. And needing to put that work in is not a bad thing. Not doing that work is the bad thing. I digress. So we are both learning. We are both learning what it is to budget, to balance our budget, to work together in doing this. And we both have to give each other grace. And each month, something pops up that we realize hasn't quite been working or that we need to tweak and we are just continually doing that and i'm really 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 proud of ourselves because the amount of debt that we have paid off so far is astounding and looking at the start of the year this mountain seemed absolutely colossal and on paper the finances do not stack up for us to be debt free within a year however the amount that we have already cleared is truly amazing and it does give us hope that maybe we can be debt free by the end of the year and that's all down to our team where that's all down to us getting on the exact same page budgeting and sticking to it and that takes me to my very last point and that is self-discipline no one tells you that when you are living on one income the level of self-discipline that you need is above and beyond. Like, money management is just as important, if not more important, than the amount of money coming into your home. So, if you have money coming in every month, but you live off your credit card, and you live off finance payments, and you're always in your overdraft, and there's always a negative amount, like, there is more month than there is money, at the end of your paycheck then whether you earn an extra 10 grand or whether you earn an extra million it makes no odds because the habits you had from the start are only magnified by the money that you've got coming in and we have definitely definitely learned that that it is so important the way you manage the money but that takes self-discipline so on a bad day when you want to go to the shop and blow your budget you can't because that would derail the plan that will either derail or at least put you on a detour and add to the amount of time it's going to take to pay off debt and it's the little spends that really add up so for example if i was walk to walk teddy to the shops every day and i spent two pound every day and i did that monday to friday four weeks in a month then that would be two pound a day. So then that would be 14 pound a week. So then that would be 56. That would be 56 pound a month just on these little spends, just because 
for whatever reason I wanted a pack of sweets and I wanted a drink or something um so and then if Brad did the same on the weekends and he decided he wanted to go to Greg's and he spent five pound on a Saturday and Sunday and he did that four weekends like that's 10 20 30 40 pound and before you know it you've spent almost 100 pound between you on random stuff and then when you start to add that up if you didn't spend that money that would be 1200 a year that could have gone on something else a family holiday or the car that i want or whatever whatever so we have really had to learn to be self-disciplined and that the budget is the budget and we need to stick to it and that takes a lot of work it does we have meetings so we have a pre-payday meeting to set our budget and then we have a check-in like mid-month just to see how we're going if there's been any unexpected changes to our budget if we need to claw back anywhere whatever whatever it all takes work it all takes time but I will say that I've been on the other side where we haven't necessarily addressed our finances and then we are worrying about money and we are you know when you go to sleep and you have that dread in the pit of your stomach about how you're going to pay certain things or the car broke like it did back in November and where we're going to find that money and what does that mean for the next month which just so happens to be Christmas and when you lie there worrying about money and you like that that is a lot of work in itself as well and I'd, I'd rather put the time and the work in to be disciplined now than continue on the route that we were on but that level of self-discipline is crazy and both Brad and I have said that because we were putting so much discipline into our budget and into our finances and all of the things that go along with it like um checking out new deals um planning our meals looking for like discount codes all of these things take time and take discipline and it did mean that we felt that because we were being so disciplined in this area of our life that discipline was like slipping a little bit in other areas like you can't be a 10 out of 10 all of the time I feel like we've been pouring so much discipline into our finances I just wasn't aware of that. This is what it's really like living on one income as a family of three in the UK. And I am now finished to the pieces of this project. That's all I can share with you on this project right now, because as I said, it's for a secret collection, but take your guesses what you think this item might end up being and let me know in the comments. And also let me know what you think to this video are there any of the realities that you are currently living right now and is is there any that you have gone through that you want to be like heads up this is this is on its way to you please let me know and thank you for watching take care and i'll see you in the next one and please 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 subscribe so you know when my next video is coming up all right take care bye okay baby asleep you had a good time. What did you get up to? Hmm? Was he climbing? Is it like having a different child? I know, but now he's getting better with his body.